This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Shalom Vacha. We're continuing with our wonderful learning. So our wonderful God took the man, means the man and his wife, and put them in Garden of Eden to work over there and to preserve it, to keep it, to watch over it. To work means to make it work, to make sure that all the systems work right, to care, to have a heart. So the Creator said to the man, Mikol etz hagan achol tochel. It's written, that the Creator said to the man, Lemor. What does it mean, Lemor? Lemor means to say. So he told him to say. Why to say? To say means that Adam, the first man, he was the one that heard that prophecy. He heard that guiding from the Creator. But he was obligated not only to hear it for himself, just also to tell it to the rest of the world means to tell his wife and in the future to tell their children and on to teach. Mikol etz hagan achol tochel. You are allowed to eat from all trees of the garden. But from the tree of knowledge, of wisdom, good and bad, you're not supposed to eat from it. Don't eat from that. Because in the day you'll eat from it. Mot tamut. You will die. We can talk for days on those verses. Those verses are very, very deep, very meaningful. They hold tons of information, of pure knowledge, wisdom for life. You know, in the way that the verses, the Bible is written, we don't have... Um, we, we don't have um, dots, points, we don't have um, um, comma, we, we, don't, we, we can read the verses in a very free way. You can say the same verse in a different way and it will hold a different meaning. So the simple meaning of reading this verse, we can learn that the tree of knowledge holds inside of it the good and the bad. So because the, the good and the bad are mixed in it, and it's not completely good, just there is also bad in it, so then, don't eat it. Okay, great commandment. Now we can understand it. It's not a 100% pure fruit. There is something wrong with it. So the Creator is warning us, don't take it. Wonderful. You don't have the power to, to, clarify, to, to, to bring out the good from the bad in a way that you won't be damaged. So don't touch it. Don't eat from it. But there is another way to read that verse. And that way is the way that will that we will achieve in the future means that if Adam and Eve would listen would have listened to the Creator when he commanded them not to eat, so then after a while he would tell them, now there's a way you can eat from it and to enjoy it. And then it would have been a blessing. And we, in the future to come, we will clarify for ourselves exactly what's the purpose of our lives. 
and we're going to know exactly how to serve the Creator with a happy heart and a wishing soul, with an honest and straight heart, and then we will be able to enjoy that fruit from Tree of Knowledge. And the way to see it in the verse is to read the verse in that way. And from the Tree of Knowledge, good, you can eat, and bad, you're not going to eat from it. Means that in the future to come, we will have that ability to take out only the good, but to throw away the peel, just to throw away the husks, all the coverings, all the darkness that is hovering and blocking the goodness of that fruit. What is that secret? We will learn a little bit more in the future. We can see that when the snake is coming to attempt um, Eve, so he's telling her that the Creator, he was afraid, he was scared that you, the man and his wife, will become like God to define, to know between good and bad. And that's why he for, forbidden you from eating that tree. And that's for sure is a lie because the Creator is 100% generous and he's not afraid of anything. And everything that goes on in his world is under his control. And the Creator himself, he's willing to give as much as possibly we can receive. The only thing that he's holding back certain things for a certain time until we're building the right vessels for it. That's all the story. Now, also, we see in the future that after their sinning, and violating that commandment of not eating from the tree. So their eyes are being opened in a way, but they're falling from their pure wisdom and they, they like finding themselves separated from the Creator. Means that that wisdom have, that they bought while eating didn't really meant as wisdom it's really damaged their wisdom and threw them back millions of miles away from where they were holding one hour before the sin. So, like we said about the light of the day and the darkness of the night, it seems for every person, to every person, that in the daytime, when there's light, you can see better than in the night but when you try to look at the sky, so you see that the light is blinding you and you cannot see the stars. And at night, when there is no light, so then the sky is clear and open and you can see and, 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 and enjoy that sight. So your eyesight, your power of vision is going much, much further to a longer distance when it's dark means when you can see less. So it's a tricky world. And when the Creator is telling you, don't eat from that fruit, it won't do good. You just need to be very simple. When you're innocent, then you'll be with your God. Like if you're not innocent, if you are a wise guy, if you're always thinking, oh no, no, but listen, I found a way. You, you already separated yourself from, from heaven because the Creator, He revealed His will to His beloved ones, to all of His children. And those righteous ones that were loyal and innocent and simple, like Abraham, that He was Tamim, that He was innocent, that He was pure, that He was a good person. He took the message and he went with it and he passed it to the next generation. And in every generation you have someone that is innocent enough, that is a pure heart, that can receive the torch from his teacher and to pass it to the next generation. Now, you just need to be simple and innocent and to listen to the words of the real wise people, the real pure hearts and to accept and to hear the will of heaven.
So in the future to come, we will have that ability to eat from the tree of knowledge, only the good part, and the bad, we're not going to eat from it. Because we going to remember that in the past, we died. Spiritually, we died. And the Creator said, It's not good that the person will be alone. All the rest of the animals, all the creations, everyone came down to this world in couples, in pairs. And only the man and his wife had one body. So they couldn't enjoy each other. They couldn't talk, they couldn't smile to each other, they couldn't walk hand in hand happily together. Everything was like stuck. So the Creator said, he needs help. I'll bring someone that half of his soul to help him. Now it's written, Ezer Kenegdo, and it's a very known saying that if the person, what does it mean, Ezer Kenegdo? Ezer, it's help. Kenegdo, it can be also in front of him or that it's against him. So there are two meanings, there are two concepts, two ideas in, in the end of that verse that are giving a lot of light on, on the purpose and the nature of relationships between a man and a woman, that if the person purified himself, a man cleaned himself and purified himself, so then his wife, she will stand by his side and she will help him. But if he really needs help, and not support, just like he is a problematic guy. So then his wife, she will stand against him and she will help him in that way. So there is no negative side in it. It's always with your face toward your life success and perfect achievement of understanding the purpose of your creation. So when a person is receiving a compliment or a support or love or whatever, every good energy from his beloved wife, so then he should say to himself, all right, great, the Creator gives me those compliments and he's helping me. And I see that in the face and the wonderful behavior of my wife. But if he sees that his wife, she's not happy with him, that she has some issues with him, and she's rebuking him, arguing with him, questioning him, doubting him, he needs to take that as a lesson. He needs to say, all right, I haven't purified myself enough, and it means that I'm blind in certain points, and I cannot recognize the godly plan. I've been drifted away from the purpose. So there is someone here that is standing against me, but really pushing me to the center, bringing me back to life. And the Creator created from the ground, from the earth, all the animals of the field, and all the birds, and he brought to the man for him to call them names. And every one of the animals that the Creator called him, that the Creator brought in front of the man, every one of those um, spirits, every one of those animals, Adam looked at him and called him in a certain name, and that was his name. Now, the name is not only his name, it not only called him a zebra, a giraffe, a cow, an elephant, also gave him the character. He put the spirit into him. Means that in those days when Adam was cool and relaxed and happy, so the nature of the animals were also happy and cool. And they were nice and friendly. But 
with the time, with the generations, with the exiles and the sorrow and the pain and the bad attributes of ours, when we're calling them in names, we're bringing our negative nature into the animals. And that's why today you have predators and you have such cruel animals, poison animals, violent and, and, and cruel and, and scary animals because of those negative character lines of human beings. We're still playing in the same role that our soul um, um, been sent to to keep, to be in, to play and therefore we are creating the reality that we live in. So we need to work on our nature and to purify ourselves as much as you can, as much as we can and as long as we are working we're, we're, we are improving and we're achieving and we're fixing the world. And as long as we like giving up and falling to our bad attributes, to despair, to sadness, so we let our anger explode and control us. So anger controls the world and sadness and that's why the world is dark. But we still have hope and we're working on ourselves and we're not backing off and we're not giving up and we're in it to win it. So be strong and we're succeeding. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.